So the first four days was um, 11, yeah, 11,213, which we totally blew us away. We're up to about 30,000 now. At Founder, we're leading an educational revolution in training the entrepreneurs of tomorrow. In this series, we're talking to our own students to discover how they're building the businesses of their dreams. These are real, everyday people who have made it happen. Now, before we jump in, our lawyers have told us to tell you this. Of course, we can't guarantee you'll have the results like some of our stories are about to share in the show. And as you know, with any business, it's a lot of hard work in addition to completing any online course. And with that said, welcome to From Zero to Founder. Hey guys, Molly here. I'm the community manager for Founder Magazine and welcome to the series From Zero to Founder. Today, I'm sitting down and speaking to Kim McKee, who is one of our Start and Scale students, who has created an amazing product, which is an eco-friendly, portable wine pouch. She's gone from zero to 30K in just a month. It's incredible. So without further ado, let's get into it. Hi, Kim. Why not start and introduce yourself? Thank you, Molly. Thank you for having me here. Um, yeah, look, my name is Kim McKee. Um, I come from a marketing background. I did work for... Um, quite a few different marketing firms in my younger years um, and mainly in the marine industry. So for boat sales company and boat charter companies and that type of thing. Probably 13 or so years ago, I went out on my own and became a consultant and um, continued to consult to those, that mainly the marine industry, but also other industries. Um, and my, uh, in the last few years, I've sort of niched my consulting business down into mainly web development. Um, and my partner, he's from the uh, wine industry. He's worked in the wine industry most of his life. Uh, in, he's a winemaker and then also uh, wine um, packaging. So he sold his, his packaging business a few years ago and has always, we've always had in the back of our minds been boating people ourselves that there had to be a better way <laughs> to, um, to drink and consume and carry and, and dispose of wine when you're on, a, on board a boat. So, you know, there's no hiding just how big and awkward and breakable and um, that they are. And when you're doing, you know, for example, coastal sailing and stuff like that, you've then got all these empty bottles that you need to lug around until you get to the next mainland port and then you're dumping a heap of glass into those ports, which isn't always great. And unfortunately, a lot of glass ends up in landfill these days, no matter how diligently we put them in the in the right coloured bins. So time went on and uh, we had did have this idea for many years of packaging wine into a more practical package. At the time when we first thought of it, the packaging wasn't recyclable and it just didn't sit very well with us to think, you know, more plastic in the world. It just wasn't, wasn't going to work. So uh, as timing has had it and technology um, has improved that now that the actual pouch that we are packaging the wine into is 100% recyclable. So that was a great thing, but then we had to find a recycling partner that would work with us um, so we could sort of have a bit of a point of difference where it's not just recyclable and maybe randomly people will, might put it in the bin at the supermarkets. We wanted to do the mail back system. So that was sort of a real point of difference for the product as well, where each six pack of wine comes with a prepaid pouch, uh, like a satchel. And people put their six empties in, just drop it in Australia, put any post box and it goes direct to our recycling partner. So that was a bit of a mission to um, set up as well. But it's all come together and now we've been launched for about a month. Well, we launched on the 1st of April. So yeah, and all it was going very well thus far. How exciting. It sounds like such a whirlwind. And I love that it's kind of like you and your, your husband, Mike. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, you've almost like married the two strongest points of what you've done in your past and you've created this amazing product, which I think is is really, really interesting. And I'll definitely speak more about your unique selling points of your product because I feel like, as you quickly mentioned, having that mailback system is really important. Having the eco-friendly side of it is amazing. But tell me a little bit more about the the thought process behind your first product as in how you wanted it to look how you wanted it to I guess kind of come to life yeah sure so first and foremost for us the most important thing was um the quality of the wine because you know obviously wine in a pouch has a bit of a dodgy reputation you know of, of the, in the 80s everyone was drinking out of the four litre goons and you know they've got a very awful reputation for very poor quality wine so 
Um, we knew to do this right from the outset, we had to find good quality uh, parcels of wine. And with Mike's wine industry contacts, that was, um, you know, not easy, but easier than um, if you were, were starting fresh. So um, he knows a lot of people down in the, you know, in the Margaret River region. So he went around and we also didn't want it to be mass produced. So, he, you know, we, we, we sourced small parcels of premium wine for the first series. So we put out six different wines in the first series. We knew sort of pretty much we'd do six different, three, it was two whites, a rosé and three reds. Um, but then we knew we were going to source them from different um, wine producers as well. We didn't sort of want them all from one producer. So we, so we could tap in and get the best, what we thought was the best of each variety from, from the various producers. So we, we did that, um, but then obviously there was the logistics of then looking into the pouches that we found, you know, the 100% recyclable pouches, the minimum order quantity was 100,000. So we were like, whoa. <laughs> so we knew, you know, if we were going to do this, we were in this for the long term. So, um, so you know, we, we'll keep using them over time. Um, so then we had to work out how we're going to distinguish because every every of the hundred thousand pouches had to be exactly the same of course you can't we couldn't have different colors and different labels and stuff so how are we going to distinguish which one was which and um at first we thought we'd have a little swing tag that we would hang around that would be color coded and a, with a little tariff that people give to their friends to to help promote it and also have a qr code that people could scan and it took them to the website with more information on the actual wines However, they were printed a bit wrongly and um, were falling off. And then we were like, oh, it is more plastic. What, what are we doing? So we had to scrap that idea. It was a bit of an expensive mistake, but you live and learn. And we've ended up with little um, labels that we've actually stuck on the back of the pouches. So it tells you it's got the QR code still, so you still can scan, takes you straight through to learn about where, where it was, you know, growing and the winemaker and um, winery, et cetera. So, yeah, so that was a bit of a challenge. Um, and um, then we also had to work out how we we're going to put them in these pouches. And Mike's background with the wine packaging, that's what he did. He used to put wine into bottles. So we ended up um, a custom building a little trailer that we towed behind the car. And then we bought a filling machine from the States, purpose built for these pouches. And so we literally roll down to Margaret River and the Great Southern Reach and pull up at the winery. <laughs> Big hose comes out of the, the tank where the wine's made, plugs into the machine and we stand there and package it up ourselves, put it into the boxes, label it and um, yeah, and then get it at store it. Well, then we've had to find a storage house and then um, get it to market. I'm really interested to learn more about what you've just touched upon because there have been some quite interesting points that you have brought up. Um, but backtracking a little bit further, how did you actually find Start and Scale and Greta's course? Had you heard about it previously? I have. I've, I think I've been on the database for quite some time and I have read a lot of Nathan's stuff and, and you know, I've always been there. And then when we were starting to really get serious about green skin, I saw the Start and Scale and I thought, this is just perfect. I've got to do this course. So, um even though we kind of had the product in mind and, you know, we, we pretty much knew how we wanted to look and that sort of thing. I did, I, you know, I did the course and I started right from the beginning and went through absolutely everything because it really did, you know, it just helped clarify so many things in your own mind. You know, even when you know you kind of think you're on the right track, just to have a bit of confirmation around that you know, finding the problem, working out the statistics, um, the solution, and then the product, which is was just really great to get that, you know, that whole mindset around a problem-based um, product, which is just makes so much sense. So, um, yeah, I just really enjoyed the, I, yeah, the bite-side snippets that you could sort of do at your own pace, but it really did help me a lot with clarifying, um, you know, our unique selling points, um, our customer personas and definitely that that methodology of getting the problem first at the forefront um, and then you know promoting the stats because we've got lots of stats on the amount of glass that ends up in landfill the amount of carbon energy it takes to produce a, like people think glass is a bill and what takes so much energy to produce and then obviously how heavy it is to transport it around to market is another massive carbon emission so um, you know one truckload of package to green skin wine would be the equivalent to seven truckloads of packaged glass bottles. So it's just because it's so much smaller and lighter. So there's so many stats that we had that 
I thought were important, but realised through the course that they're really important. It's what resonates with people. So, yeah, so I, I, yeah, I think um, just being on the database is how I found the course. And then just, it was a no brainer for me to do it when I knew that, you know, this business was going to be totally online, fully e-commerce. Um, yeah, and it was brilliant. Amazing. And the one thing that you just touched upon there and how it was fully e-commerce, something new, how did you feel about, I guess, you and your husband merging together your skills to finally create a product and have it online? Walk me through your emotions, how you're feeling. Were you nervous at all creating this product and trying something new? Yeah, sort of. Um, I probably more than him. <laughs> he's quite confident <laughs> with everything he does. And I think he's he's very confident in the packaging. And we also, I think, being, being mad keen voters ourselves and outdoorsy type people, we've spoken to so many people over the years about it and everyone's just like hurry up and do it you know we're just sick of bottles and then you know obviously then there's the four-wheel driving and the caravan and camping industries which you know if horrible COVID but so many more people are doing that right now so that's another massive market that are just grabbing it and going because you know imagine rattling around in the back of your four-wheel drivers you're heading you know out bush and then you same thing as boating you've got all these empties you've got to carry back with you so um, the, I, we, I think we both knew the market was there. I was very confident that Mike would know how to get the production side of it happening and, the, and finding the good wine and getting the packaging right because that's sort of what he did. And now that I, there's quite a bit of pressure on me <laughs> to get the marketing right and um, obviously I built the website and stuff. So you, you work kind of begins once you've launched in marketing, doesn't it? You know, you do all your preamble and we had a great pre-launch and lead up and, you know, build a lot of hype prior to launch. But... Once you're launched, it's never ending. It's a continual, um, you know, mission, isn't it? To keep, keep the keep the excitement, keep the word out there. So yeah, I feel I'm probably feeling more pressure now than in the lead up, if anything. Well, you're definitely yeah. doing something right, that's for sure. And like you mentioned, it's a, a continuous learning streak. I feel. How long did it actually take you from when you had this idea to make it a reality? What was the timeline? Probably about a year. So we had the idea years ago, but then when we said, yep, yeah, this is when they became recyclable, um, it was about a year, I would say, in the sourcing, the packaging, the filling before we actually hit go on the launch. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it was a pretty big outlay, you know, a, a capital outlay and all that sort of stuff. So we, we you know, we're living and breathing this now. <laughs> so... Um, it's good because it gives Mike something. Now he's sold his bigger business. It's just something, you know, keeping him off the streets, <laughs> keeping him busy, keeping him out of my hair a little bit. So, yeah, it's um, it was, you know, not a, I, I would imagine that other businesses take longer than that and some much shorter. But, um, yeah, it was a good year of getting all our ducks lined up before we were confident to hit the guy button. Really interesting. And you mentioned before just about your uh, pre-launch strategy. What were some of the key yeah. things that you implemented that you really think helped kind of um, build where you are today and kind of assert yourself in that um, industry of being in the wines? Because like you mentioned there, it's quite oversaturated. There's a lot of bottled wines, but there isn't a lot of good quality wines in something that's so transportable. Yeah, um, and I think this is where the course really hit it home for me as well because it, it is hard to feel confident when you haven't got something to sell. And, um, you know, Credit said, don't worry about that. And it's true, you don't worry about that because if you know you are launching, you've got to build up that hype and that, um, that you know, interest to be as, as you go along. So the first thing I did was just build a very basic landing page on the, on the website that I could gather data from. And, and then um, set up obviously the Facebook and Instagram were the two social channels that I used. And I just started talking about what we're doing and, and inviting people into the story and, you know, the good, the, good, the bad, the ugly. So, uh, you know, told them when we had the failure with the, the net tags that didn't work, we were meant to be launching. Sorry, it's a bit delayed for four weeks because we've had to change tactics. Tell people it's, you know, people are interested. So, you know, and I and it was also fun with the with the little trailer that's all logoed up and pictures of us down there bottling, and so it's in, people are interested. You know, you're in the back, the bowels of the wineries, and in amongst all the barrels, so it's all good vision and and quite interesting stuff. So it was, 
you know, it was great to have a product that is so widely um, enjoyed, I guess, by people and people found this, you know, the whole, the, you know, they you know, commenting of, you know, look, it's tough and, you know, you're like, I actually was sitting on the bottling line for eight hours a day or a pouching line. But um, yeah, and the beautiful Margaret River and all the areas. So I just put sort of, I just kept them in the loop of the story of what was going on and then sign up, sign up, sign up, sign up to be first in wine, which is what I was putting everywhere. And so I, it wasn't a huge database when we launched. I think it was about 350 or 400 people on the database, but then quite a lot of followers on the socials. And then I just kept communicating with them via email, just telling them what was going on. I'm sorry, we're delayed. You know, we had a couple of false starts just because of the packaging, but people were, you know, they, they just liked to know what was happening. Um, yeah, so um, I think it was, yeah, just really inviting people into the, into the whole story. And, and, you know, we have a lot of boating friends, so, you know, they were all very keen and interested and, just keeping them engaged, I guess, um, without overkill, <laughs> which is dangerous. <laughs> I think it's great that you went with a more authentic approach and had that transparency with your audience, um, which ended up working out well because 350 to 400 signups is an incredible feat. And I know a lot of people listening will also kind of appreciate that transparency because they might be thinking about going down, down the same um, route if they were going through some of the trials and tribulations that you went through as well. In terms of your manufacturing process, you said that you tried a few different samples. How many samples did you go through before you actually found the one that is now being used for green skin wine? Yeah, um, pretty much it was only two. So we had one that um, the, the supplier sent us two different ones and the one we chose had a better um, like barrier that to protect the wine because that's the other thing is it has to be a special uh, makeup of materials. I can't tell you these specs on it off the top of my head, but um, yeah, it, it had to be to a certain grade, a certain standard to, to be able to protect the quality of the wine, but then also um, satisfy the recycling piece. So we didn't have a lot of choice. So it was sort of like this, that that was a little bit substandard or the better one, we would just went with the better one straight away. Amazing. And I think it's great that you were limited in choices for some because you could yes. be overwhelmed. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I've had a look on your website yeah. and I think it's amazing how clean your branding is. You said you had a vision from the start and having an experience in marketing, were you only sold on that one design you just knew from the start that's what you wanted to kind of portray your brand as uh no so we employed a gorgeous um graphic designer local lady um here called sally from blackjack designs and she we sort of gave her a bit of free reign we had an idea in our heads but i also didn't want to influence her I think you can overkill with designers and, and tell them too much what you want. So we had, you know, I had an idea, Mike probably had a totally different one, um, but he was always going to run with, you know, what we, what Sally and I thought, um, knowing that it's probably more our area than his. Um, and she came up with a few, you know, quite a few concepts with the logo and the branding and the colours and all that sort of stuff. But she pretty much nailed it, you know, from the get go. She was very good. Um, so yeah, we did a, a quite, you know, as you do, quite a lot of backing and forwarding. Um, but I did not try and control her, which I think is a mistake people make because um, designers do know things that <laughs> normal people don't know what's going to actually work. And she'd done quite a lot with packaging before. So yeah, we wanted to keep it simple. I think because the what like the wines, we want it to look quality, not cheap and nasty, obviously but also not take ourselves too seriously. It didn't want to be a stuffy brand either, you know, which some wines can be. So yeah, we sort of try to strike that balance of fun, um, but it is premium, it's not trash, you know. So we didn't want big, ugly, you know, graphics and pictures and cartoons and things like that, that some of the brands go down. So yeah, it was, it was actually fun. I like that side of things. It was really fun working with Sally. And then she, and then obviously it wasn't just the pouch, it was then the box that, that comes in, the, um, six pack box and then the envelope the recycling envelope um, and then all our business cards and everything yeah so um, and yeah then it was very easy to transport that because it's you know it's pretty much three basic colors the black green and white there's a few tones of green in there to then translate onto a website and anything else we're trying not to print anything we're trying to go totally 
know, people ever get a brochure, you know, <laughs> we've got a website, you know, like I just, we just don't need more paper and plastic floating around the planet. So yeah, we've sort of stuck to that. And that, and that was another thing I, I kept in, you know, the social media updates and stuff, just showing people what, how it was coming together. I didn't keep that a big secret, you know, here's our logo, here's our business card. And um, everything I did, I just took on my phone. I didn't really pay for any, or I haven't paid for any professional photography or anything like that. And I think it just keeps a little bit more authentic. And I think people shouldn't be scared to do that. Um, people can see through Photoshop <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> falsities and I think I'm a bit sick of it but you know the more the more real and raw seems to resonate that in our case it has anyway. At Founder 99% of our content is free. Today's episode is only made possible by our incredible student community from our magazine subscribers to the entrepreneurs enrolling in our course programs. If you are thinking of finally starting your own business make sure to check out the exact free training that led today's guests to where they are now. Head to founder.com slash e-commerce training or follow the link in the show notes. That's great advice. And to be honest, your website looks very clean, very professional. It doesn't look like iPhone photos or anything like that. And I had a look at your Instagram and it is great to see, like I mentioned earlier, the transparency that you do have because it's helped you build that authentic uh, audience that really love your product. Walk me through how you went. So you said you launched in April. Yeah, April 1st, funny day to do it. But. Yeah, April Fool's, that's what I was going to say. Were people thinking that you were pranking them? <laughs> yeah, we did it. I actually did. So I did it. Um, the launch to the database because I always told them they'd be first in wine, first in wine. That was the whole, you know, lead up. So two days before, which uh, must have been the 30th of uh, March, I sent the email out and launched it. You know, you're the first, get in quick. And that's when we had that big blowout of sales. I think it was like, $11,000 or something in four days and then launched it to the public. Um, but yeah, and, and I was putting, you know, launching April 1st, no joke. That was just what I was writing everywhere. And I did it after midday just in case there was <laughs> something bad was going to happen. <laughs> All that superstitious belief, you got to cross your fingers, touch wood. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it'd be an easy day to remember forever, you know, what day we launched was April Fool's. So yeah, why not? Exactly, why not? I think it's really great. And you did just quickly skim over it. And it's such a huge feat. You did four in four days, you did $11,000 in sales. Is that correct? So the first four days was, um, yeah, 11,213, which would totally blew us away. It was fabulous. Do you still remember when that first sale came through, you pinching yourself or what was that like? Yeah, it was great. And I actually knew the guy and I messaged him. I said, thank you so much for our first sale. He said, oh my God, I've never been first at anything. <laughs> And I said, oh, you got it. You, you won buying um, booze. He said, oh, yeah, I'm good at that. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, very, it was a good feeling. And then they just kept pinging and pinging and pinging. And I couldn't hardly sleep that night because I was like, oh, my God. You know, they just kept on coming. So, yeah, it was pretty exciting stuff. Really exciting. And then correct me if I am wrong, you've had around $19,000 in sales since we're up to about thirty thousand now so there was a big jump out of the blocks and then you know it's been trickling you know continuing um i've just kicked in a quite a big facebook advertising you know, instagram paid advertising campaigns and stuff so that's that's starting to reel them in reel in now so yeah, and we're getting quite a lot of press coverage through yachting um, media um, and, you know, various. Um, so all that sort of starting now. I've wind up. I was a little bit hesitant of really belting all those people's doors down until we were launched and it was happening and it was working and the website wasn't crashing and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, as I said, the pressure's on me now to keep it happening. <laughs> I think you're doing a great job. I think the sales speak for themselves as well. And I'm sure it will keep trickling in because 30,000 since April is an, a massive achievement. So congratulations. <laughs> but from there, how do you plan on scaling? Obviously, you've got something that works, you found a product that is doing really, really well. At the moment, it's you and your husband packaging and everything still. So series one, the six wines, it's all packaged up. It's all sealed up. It's all at the warehouse. So people order and that's that's being sent out. Um, we'll go on a massive promo tour now. We're actually going to go and jump on our boat. For, we have a boat on the East Coast and we're going to um, go on a big promo tour. 
Um, but yeah, I've got lots of ideas on, on different things we can scale. I'm very mindful of Greta's advice with, you know, including added value. Um, so I'm going to actually um, get Mike to do some introductory to wine courses, some very short, easy digestible snippets, you know, online that talks people. I think the wine industry, if people that are in it think everyone knows everything about it. And so many people, we don't, normal people don't. It's not, you know, it's all a bit daunting and a little bit, um, and there's just, you know, you walk into a bottle shop, look how much there is. It's like, how do you choose? You know, it's all very, um, I don't know. It's not, it isn't as obvious as anyone that's in it thinks it is. So I'm going to get him to do some really basic stuff like intro to wines and regions and varieties and all that sort of stuff. And probably give away quite a lot of that, you know, buy this and get this course on the website. So out of value stuff like that. We're also looking at some um, decanters, you know, so we, you can decant the wine into a nice decanter to have on the table. But I must say the wines are really, um, if you're going to a fancy dinner party, you're probably not going to drop your green skin wine on the table. It's more for when you're doing things, you're picnicking, you're camping, you're boating, you're, you know, you're in your four-wheel drive camper vanning, whatever. That's, you know, where we're going with it. We're not trying to take over the fancy bottle wine market at all. It's more that when you're going somewhere, when you're on the move. But, um, yeah, so possibly sell the decanters. We could sell plastic, you know, nice plastic glasses because most plastic glasses are horrible. Trying, we've been sourcing some, um, you know, good quality ones that we could sell on the, on the site as well and, or, you know, or include, if you know, buy X, get some free glasses, that type of thing. Um, I'm sticking everything, pretty much to everything online. So all, you know, Facebook advertising and Instagram, obviously, hopefully this latest iOS update doesn't disrupt that too much. But you've always got to be mindful of those platforms, don't you, that can be ripped out from underneath you at any given time. So keep building up our database, keep talking to them, keep providing value, keep them excited. Next series, we might do a say Victorian series of wines or, you know, we, we will just see, we're not sure where the next series would go, but we'll come back and pack it, start packaging that up at the end of the year and launch. And probably that'll launch on the 1st of April, you know, next year. So hopefully what we've got now will be all sold out. We'd rather sell out than have a heap of, you know, stock sitting around. Um, and yeah, so keep it, you know, we, we're actually not trying to scale it into something that's going to blow the world away because you can't keep the quality. It sounds like you have a lot of exciting things coming up. And I, I think it's a great idea that you're going with, with using your husband's expertise to provide more knowledge that you can have. Because as you mentioned, there's some platforms out there that aren't dependent and aren't controlled by you, whereas a course or things like that can really be more reliant on your knowledge and your skills to market it, which you're already doing an amazing job by. With you. No, you're fine. With scaling, how will you go about, so you mentioned you have a trailer that you take to these amazing wineries, you fill up eight hours per day. Do you have a process in mind to help you with maybe a higher demand or are you really happy kind of being on the forefront and packaging up and, and doing all that side of the business? Yeah, I think for now, definitely, we were very keen this first series particularly to do everything ourselves to keep the, so we were quality controlling and, you know, and, and things happen like the the swing tags that we originally put on and them not working has actually been, you know, it was terrible, but a good thing because we've had to go and undo every pouch and, and put a label on it. But for our first round, it just means we've checked every single pouch. We've been able to give it a good, you know, because wine leaks when you're filling it and stuff, so they're all clean and beautiful and packaged well. So to have that control round one has been wonderful. Um, and then I would say we'll do the same for round two. And then we'll see, you know, we've had quite a few, we've had some inquiries from overseas of some of the big wineries over there wanting to package Australian wine with their brand in it. So if it sort of went to that level where we were using pouches, but maybe not our branding, someone else's branding, um, and they've chosen the wine, we then obviously will maybe, you know, look at getting other people to help with the, with the more mundane, um, you know, hard, uh, you know, um, stuff that um, you know takes time and it's, it's fine but it is just something that you know you can teach someone else to do and that's you know just make sure you put the right toes into the machine and stuff but yeah um, we're, yeah I think for now having the just the quality control we just really wanted to make it right so 
but going forward, who knows where it will go. We've had some funny inquiries from all sorts of places. <laughs> Which is incredible yeah. for such a young business to have people reaching out to and really inspired by your product. I think that's such an incredible feat and it's only just to show what could come. And in speaking of the future, do you have a particular revenue goal that you're aiming for um, in the coming months? Yeah, we'd like to we'd like to sell around four hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth year one, so that's the target. And um, if you if you drop that back, you know it's about eight and a half thousand dollars a week, and it's about just over thousand dollars a day. So we're almost touching. We we're, we're just below that um, at the moment, how we're tracking. But I, I think it'll just exponentially grow now. The, the more product that's out there, we're getting so many people sending us in their photos of them, you know, enjoying it in crazy great places. And so that's just again this user gen. You know, back to the course, the user generated content when people love that. That's what resonates. That's what's getting the responses on the socials, not some pretty picture of a fake looking pouch and a fake setting it's to, it's people you know in the red dirt and you know the, outside their campers or on the beaches and stuff like that so it's yeah i just think um naturally it, it'll grow exponentially with, with the more product and the more eyes on it and the more people drinking it and tasting it and then then just the real um realization it's like people just go oh my god that's so handy you know you don't have to when it's finished you just push it into this tiny little thing and put it in your handbag. Um, so, you know, it, it just makes sense. And we knew it made sense. And our biggest battle, I think, is price point because it isn't cheap and we don't want it to be cheap. So, you know, on socials, I've had people say, oh, not everyone spends, you know, that on a, on a, on a bottle of wine. And I'm like, no, not everyone does, but lots of people do. And it's about quality. Like, we don't want cheap wine in these things because it'll just, It'll just be get you know that hit that bad reputation. So, holding our ground with the pricing and and but being confident that the quality's there. Like we just yeah, it's it's a balance, isn't it? Of quality versus you know and price. People are price sensitive, and that's fine and fair enough. Um, but it's all you know the slogan's quality wine anywhere. So when you when you're doing roughing it in the bush, you don't have to drink rough. <laughs> you can have a really nice glass of wine. No, I love that as like a slogan because I know particularly in Australia, I can't speak for many other countries. It would be super handy. I'm thinking to myself, I know exactly where I would take that picnics, beach, everywhere that you know we're lucky enough to be able to consume alcohol in Australia. Have you found that? Oh, there you go. It reminds me of um. The little yogurt pouches. Yeah, and six pack weighs four point eight kilos, so it's time. That's like comes in a little twenty by twenty by twenty centimeter box, delivered direct, and that's so light compared to lugging six. And then your empties end up in this little tiny pouch, like that's in that. So then that's by uh, recyclable as well. So you put your empties in there, drop them in the mail. It's all prepaid. And the whole thing goes in the furnace so they don't have to open it or anything like that. So, yeah, and, the, and Red Cycle have been amazing. That was quite a fun challenge, finding a partner. Um, a lot of these recyclers want a lot of money to partner with them and we, we Red Cycle have just been amazing. Um, and I think that first they thought we were going to have like thousands and thousands of tonnes of and when, when we told them how small it will actually be, they were like, oh, that sounds fantastic. Because they were saying, just drop them. I don't know whether you've seen outside Coles and Woolies. They have those bins that you put your plastics in and you never see much in there. We're like, no, no one will do it. <laughs> you know, like the only way we're going to do this is if we can do this mail-in thing, which obviously costs us money, but it's fine. It's sort of our, our social good um, That because it is plastic. We don't want them anywhere else but recycled. And they're making, you know, they turn into playground equipment and roads and all sorts of things. So, yeah, once we get a bit more of that, that's another story I'll go down, what, what your pouch has been made into. And, and we'll be able to tell exactly how many people are doing it because we obviously get charged when the thing's been sent in. So on the website, I'm going to have like a little thermometer where, um, you know, Queensland... 10% of you are doing it, Victoria 30, and have a bit of a competition with the states of who's the best recycling, you know, doing the best. So to sort of get more people behind it all. So yeah, once there's more volume of that happening, I'll get all that sort of stuff going as well. Because I think it's the three things is the quality of the wine, the practicality, and then the eco side, the environment. So 
they're the three pillars that I'm sort of constantly talking up and talking about. And within that, there's so much content. There's no shortage of stuff to talk about and to promote and to, or, you know, and just to educate people. So yeah, it's been really fun. It's been a very, very fun mission. That's for sure. Definitely. And personally for me, I think it's a great initiative to have. Have you had the great reception from others that see what you're doing to help improve um, the waste that can become of glass bottles and things? Have people actually personally given you reviews about that system in place? Loads of people just going, oh, that is just brilliant. And and people that sort of don't know better on socials and stuff have said, oh, more plastic, how's it better than glass? And then as soon as you explain, uh, one pack takes less than 20% of the energy to produce in a glass bottle, 750 mil glass bottle compared to it. So it's t- you know, less than 20% of the energy to make it so many fewer emissions to transport and then um they don't end up in landfill you know then it's got the recycling people like oh no one will send them back in you're like well i can't do much more (laughs) than provide the envelope and you know so i think people will i don't know i have a lot of faith in and particularly i think the younger generations are just everyone's so much more eco-conscious and aware and it's kind of, I hate to say I'm not young, but like the older people that are like, oh, no one will do that. You're like, oh. And that's just randoms on, on socials rather than people we know and, you know, everyone, anyone we've sort of told about that even if we've just met them, they go, oh, my God, that's brilliant. You know, like this, you just get those kind of keyboard warriors on, you know, when you're doing advertising and stuff, it's going out to lots of different people and, but not many. And as soon as I start explaining and I, you know, very politely explain why, you know, why it is better for the environment and way better for the environment than glass, you know, at, at wineries around the world are just taking so many measures to, um, to lessen their carbon footprint by doing all their viticulture practices differently. They're using biodynamic and dynamic. So packaging is the obvious next thing for them to look at, to go, how can we actually really improve our, our, our footprint. So it's, it'll, it'll end up being commonplace, I'm sure. Um, but you'll, you know, we'll probably see a competitor quicker than what we'd like, but that's okay. You know, it's, if it's helping the planet, that's fine. It's, um, it's, that's why we've got to keep our brand difference of, of these premium parcels of wine. Mike's wine knowledge, hand selecting them, knowing where they've come from, you know, how he's handled it into the packet, all that sort of stuff is what's keeping it, at, you know, the real, um, you know, the unique selling points. Um, yeah, so exciting. <laughs> it's just a part of being an entrepreneur and going through the journey where you will have competitors, but no one ever will have the same marketing as you and no one will ever have the same ways that you want to actually present your product, which I think, as you touched upon, a lot of people listening might be stuck because they might feel, I have a really great idea, I don't want anyone to steal it, or the opposite where they see something and they're like, I can think of improving that, but it's already been done. What advice would you give to someone if they're listening to this thinking in that mindset? Oh, look, I think if you've got a really clear, I I think it it really helps to be passionate about it. Like if it's something you really love and believe in, it it'll and and you you can see obviously say it's an existing product, you love it, you believe in it, but you can see, oh my God, it could be so much better. I mean, how many products have just done so well by adapting something that's already out there just go for it like you know it it, just be very clear with your vision of your brand who you are who you want to be how you want to be portrayed and perceived in the marketplace you know branding is all about a feeling you give people um you know how they feel about it when they see it and and the emotions it conjures up and we're trying to conjure up that fun oh i'm going on an adventure but i can drink nice wine you know that sort of that thrill and excitement around that rather than it, you know, oh, it's just another thing of wine. Um, so yeah, I think it, you know, and, and keep that real customer focus. What are you, what is in it for them? Um, because rather than what, you know, it's easy to get caught up in something you love as well, but not really think about the millions of other people in the world that'll be buying it. So it's keeping, I, I just think of the customer in everything that we do, what it, what's gonna work for them? How can we make it easy for them? How can we explain stuff that, you know, when you know something, so like you're just living it, you think everyone else thinks the same, they don't. So, you you know, how to explain it to make it exciting and fun. Um, But yeah, I just say go for it, but be clear, like, you know, lots of, it it doesn't work because people aren't clear or they want to be too like someone else. Um, 
but you know we can't paint in the pouch or anything like that and we don't, we don't care about that because it's a pouch you know like someone else will some big guy might come along and punch out some cheap wine in it and people go oh, i can buy it cheaper at down maybe go for it like it doesn't matter it, you know if you've got that point of difference and that real clear vision on on where you sit within the market i guess great advice and i think you've even inspired me with it, with helping some of the community members that might be stuck um, on particular uh, i guess ideas or or thoughts around that exact thing and lastly oh. I would love for you to describe to me how much your life has changed since bringing out this product and establish, establishing green skin wine. <laughs> um, oh, I'm just busier. <laughs> I'm still building websites for other clients as well. Um, which, yeah, so I just, I said to Mike yesterday, are you as busy as me? <laughs> like he is. But I just feel like very busy. But, you know, it, and marketing doesn't end. Like his packaging's ending now. He's, everything's sorted. It's in the thing. And he's like, I'm going to be helping you now create content. I'm like, okay, so excited. Do you even know what that is? Um, so, yeah, we're going <laughs> to. But he's quite a character. So he'll be great. I'll be putting him on the films and, you know, everything. And, he, and his knowledge of wine's amazing. He doesn't take himself too seriously, but his knowledge is so deep and thick about wine and, and and he just loves it's his thing it's just what he loves without being wanky about it if i can say that you know like because it can get pretty wanky wine um so yeah we're going to still try and keep it fun but yeah i um I'm, I'm a bit nervous you know like i just feeling i'm feeling the pressure of of the whole thing more than he's like it'll all be fine <laughs> I'm like, okay. but um yeah i don't know but i think the more the more we're selling and the more the feet the, like people are reviewing now and the feedback and the photos and getting sent and stuff the more i'm kind of going okay with you know it's it's happening it's rolling and and now we just got to keep promoting it's a never-ending thing isn't it promotion and marketing so yeah I'm not different in any crazy way. Just feel a little bit more, a little bit, you know, even building a website, I've built hundreds of websites for people. And when you're building your own, oh my God, the stress of it all. It was like, oh, this is so much harder. Why? You know, and I think you just got to do what you can to, you put a lot of pressure on yourself and um, there's only 24 hours in a day. And well, yesterday I had a major stuff up. I changed my customer relationship management system over when I moved the data from the previous supply to the new supply, my welcome email got sent to everyone. Like these are people who've been on the database for, since whenever. And I just went, oh, you know, and just you, you, I died for about two hours. And then I thought, oh, and I put a post on Facebook, sorry. And I didn't want to send another email saying sorry, because it's just another annoying thing for them to get. So I was like, and someone just wrote, like a few people just wrote, I'll have a glass of wine, don't worry about it. You know, no one really cares. It wasn't like, I didn't kill anyone, you know. <laughs> so, you know, you, you kind of just got to do what you can. But I, I think I live by the rule of do something. Like I've got to do at least three money making or sales at a proactive you know there's marketing and there's and then there's i think the proactive sales side of things so I've got, i'm trying to reach out to at least three contacts whether they're in the charter boat industry or they're journalists or they're groups that i recognize that could, would love the product that sort of stuff so three every day make that cold call or you know make the initial contact and just start the conversation with them and and you know get used to rejection it just doesn't matter if it's not for them it's not for them Move on. <laughs> really great insight. And I feel like it's also kind of great too that it hasn't changed your life too much because as you mentioned, it's a passion and you're really drawn to it and you want to do it every day, which just makes it more and more exciting, which I personally yeah. love because that's my advice to most people who ask is try and find something you're passionate about. And yes. I feel like it's great that you and your husband have those two different mindsets and you can help each other now because I'm sure you'll you'll do so many more amazing things in the future and Lastly, is there anything else you would like to say to those that are listening before we sign off? I don't think so. Like, I, I'd just like to thank you and, and the course. It was just fabulous. It was, you know, I really did get a lot out of it. And you, you never stop learning, do you? You know, being in marketing, obviously, some stuff on you, but it's still just so great to, to hear it again, hear it from a different perspective and hear it really um, totally uh, focused on e-commerce, which was why I, I was really drawn to the course. Um, and, and you're learning from people that have done it, then, you know, they're not hacks, they've, they've been there, done that. And 
there's just so many little nuggets of gold throughout it that you know not all of it fits with every with every business of course but there's just you know you you, you just got to go through methodically and do it and um so yeah no i really thank you thank um greta and everyone for putting that course together it was really 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 good um and yeah thank you for like it's just so lovely to have your support and chatting to me today i really really do appreciate it molly so yeah um it's really lovely and thank you yeah thanks for your kind words it's really very much appreciated Hey guys, we hope you're loving From Zero to Founder and you're getting a ton of value from it. If you want access to the exact free training that led today's founder to where they are now, head to founder.com slash e-commerce training or follow the link in the show notes.